good evening students uh, we'll wait 2 3 minutes and then start let others join okay so welcome back to you all uh, in the last lecture so we were doing standard results on parabola i hope you remember we just completed the standard forms of parabola which were four forms right let me quickly revise you all uh, we have someone new right is this your first lecture girisha hello girisha welcome to the class yeah chalo so let's revise quickly what we were doing we were actually doing the different forms of parabola uh, which different forms of parabola we did with four standard forms of parabola which were uh, y square equal to 4ax y square equal to minus 4ax let me revise yeah case to y square equal to minus 4ax x square equal to 4ay and x square equals to minus 4ay so without further ado let's start with some more standard things and then we'll jump on to the uh, next topic right so come on guys uh, yeah i think uh, like uh please let me brief you about the schedules uh we'll be spending some less time on numericals although we'll uh, in every lecture we'll be doing 15 minutes of numericals but mainly your problem solving will be done on the weekend classes that is saturdays and sunday i hope you are joining the weekend classes as well because there we'll do only numericals no theory part so we have changed a bit like uh, we'll do some numericals here also in our regular lectures also but mainly main numericals of pyqs and everything will be discussed in the saturdays and sundays that is the weekend classes our main aim is to cover theory in these classes so let us proceed that way we have changed the plan so yeah let's start the next thing uh, this is again yeah the next that we are going to do is the lattes rectum now the lattes rectum is a very 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 important part of the parabola uh, lattes rectum basically helps us to determine whether the parabola is how widely open or how widely closed so let us see lattes rectum first uh, we have already defined the lattes rectum i hope so you know the definition of the lattes rectum so the focal chord which is perpendicular 
टू द एक्सिस ऑफ पैराबोला इज कॉल्ड द लेटस रेक्टम The next is length of lattice rectum. Now length of lattice rectum of y square equal to four a is equal to four a. Now let us derive or let us find how do we get this four a, right guys? So let this be the parabola. Let L L dash be the lattice rectum. Here is the L dash, right? This is the lattice rectum. Now lattice rectum passes through focus. So focus the coordinates will be a comma zero. Next AS, where is AS? This is AS equals to A. Obviously, since focus the coordinates are A comma zero. Right, guys. Uh, next SL. Now SL B L. So let if we say length of SL is L, then uh, you can see that the coordinates of point L will be A comma L. I hope you can understand. Here we have taken the length of SL as small l. So here the coordinates of point L will be a comma l, correct? Then coordinate uh, l a comma l lies on the parabola. That means it must satisfy. So if we substitute a comma l in the equation of parabola, we'll get a comma l must satisfy. So we'll get l square equal to four a into a. That means l equals to plus minus two a. Now, if l equals to two a, then it will be point capital L. If l equals to minus two l, then it will be point L dash. I hope you can remember. Uh, you are able to understand. Uh, if not, you can write in the chat box also. Uh, I can see the chat box now. So this coordinate was a comma l, right? So that means l and l dash are the extreme points of lattice rectum. So if we want to find the length of lattice rectum, it is l into l dash, right? How will we find? We simply use the distance formula between l and l dash. Now there are some other technical terms. SL is called semi lattice rectum, right? Which is of the length. Two a, you can see s is a comma zero, l is a comma l. So if you calculate by distance formula s l, we get the length of s l as two a. Now the length of lattice rectum will be four a. This is very 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 important. Why? Because it's distance between focus and vertex. So four into a. What is a? A is distance between focus. And vertex distance between focus and vertex distance between focus and vertex, right? Sure. That is two into two a. Uh, we can say also the distance between focus and direct. So equation of lattice rectum is it is parallel to y axis and passing through a comma zero. So x equals to a. Right, guys. Just a second. Yeah. Anjana, Girish, and Mamta. Are you all understanding? Give me a thumbs up, or should we revise it again? You have any doubts? Okay. Thank you all. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Yeah. Next is the focal distance. So, what is the focal distance? Focal distance is defined as the distance of any point P on the parabola from the focus. So, let's say if P is any point on parabola here, x one comma y one, with focus S, then the length SP or PS is the focal distance. Now we can easily get the focal distance by using distance formula. So, let us use the distance formula. Right, the focal distance of P x one comma y one on the parabola is x one mod of x one plus a. So how did this came, guys? What is the proof? Uh, how will be the proof? So what we'll do first? We'll first substitute the point P. Just a second, guys. Yeah, we substitute the point P 
on the parabola because p lies on parabola correct yeah i hope you can see the pointer so if p lies just a second if p lies on the parabola then we got y1 square equal to 4a x1 correct now sp by using the distance formula we got this if you open the brackets y1 square we can write it as 4a x1 so if i write it 4a x1 then my equation will become x1 plus a the whole square y so x1 minus a the whole square if you open this bracket you will get x1 square plus 2a x1 plus a square so it will be x1 plus a the whole square and we know that under root and square root will get cancelled and it will be mod x1 plus a so the focal distance of any point p on the parabola is mod x1 plus a now please try to uh, understand here that guys these standard result we are proving for y square equals to 4x as you can see here but 90% uh, of the time the parabola asked in the jwe questions is this only which is y square equal to 4ax but many a times uh, approximately say uh, one question in 2 3 years they ask the parabola which are not y square equal to 4a which means the other three cases right which was y square equal to minus 4ax, x square equal to 4ay or x square equal to minus 4ay. So out of these, they can ask any parabola, but majority time, 90% of time they ask this parabola. That's why it is important to remember these standard results for the parabola y square equal to 4ax. Let's see what we have next. We have next MCQs. Uh, you know what do we do in MCQ? We just check whether you are paying attention or not. So the first one is the equation of directrix of parabola. So let's see. Anyone, Mamta, Girisha, or Anjana? So you can type your message in the chat box. directrix of y square equal to 4ax come on if you are not able to do then try to draw the diagram guys if you draw the diagram it will be pretty easy no one i think you are not revising right this we did in the last lecture Am I right? Y'all guys are not revising. The answer is x plus a equals to 0. How? Because the parabola y square equal to 4ax looks like this. And here is the directrix. So what is its equation? It is x plus a equals to 0. See this if you remember. y square equal to 4ax case. x plus a equals to 0. Now the equation of x is of parabola. Chalo, we already have the diagram here. This is the axis of parabola which is x axis so what is the equation y equals to zero so that means option number three is my correct answer are you all getting it hello guys okay anjana has been giving answers sorry uh i'll open the chat here yeah Chal. let's see what we have next the focal distance, Chalo. what is the focal distance? We did it just now, right guys? It is third, superb Girisha. It is mod of x1 plus a. The length of letters right now. 
length of lattice rectum of the parabola y square equals to 4x. No. Second one, right. It is option 2, which is 4a. So, now, uh, just a second, guys. Yeah. Let us move on to the next PPT. Which is, yeah, position of a point with respect to parabola. Right? I hope you can see the PPT. Sure. The next is position of a point with respect to parabola. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, I hope you remember we did the position of a point with respect to circle also. So here in every topic, we will be going to do same thing. That is position of point with respect to parabola, then position of point with respect to ellipse. Excuse me. And then position of point with respect to hyperbola. So before we move further, uh, we just we will go through the standard notations. So S is the equation of parabola. T is equation of tangent. If you remember, when we replace x square by x into x1, y square by y into y1. Here we only need to replace y square and x. Then we replace x by x plus x1. 2x by x plus x1 and so on. Right, guys? I hope you understand. So this is the T part, expression of T. Next is S1. What is S1? S1 is if we substitute the point. That means if I substitute x1 and y1 in place of used, let's see how they help us to get position of a point. So here, p x1 comma y1 is a point given to us, and we have to find its position. So it says if s1 is greater than zero, then point p lies outside the parabola. So now, uh, if I give you one thing, the other two things you can guess. If s1 equals to zero, this is the case. If s1 equals to zero, then point p lies on the parabola, as you can see in the diagram. And if S1 less than 0, then point P lies inside the parabola. Now, please make sure this region is called the inside of the parabola. And this region here is called the outside of the parabola. So it is similar to circle. S1 greater than 0, P lies outside. S1 equal to 0, P lies on. And S1 less than 0, P lies inside. I hope it is clear. Let's see what we have next. Tangent. So now again, the most important and crucial part of coordinate geometry, whether it may be circle, parabola, ellipse, or hyperbola. We also saw tangents in a circle. Now again, we'll be seeing tangent in parabola. After that, again, we'll see tangent in ellipse. And lastly, we say tangent in hyperbola. So, what is a tangent? As we have already discussed, tangent is a limiting case of a not go through the definition and all. How to get equation of tangent? So, S equals to zero be a parabola. Right. So let's say P is a point on parabola, Q be any other point. Same thing is the secant line PQ. If 
approaches on the same limiting point. That means if Q approaches approaches P, then the secant line PQ will become a tangent. As you can see, we have discussed this in the earlier lecture also. But yeah, once again, because it is very important. So yeah, this is the definition of a tangent. Right? So a tangent line, or it is a tangent to the parabola. The point P, please note this, is called the point of contact or it is called foot of perpendicular but foot of perpendicular is called in case of normal in case of tangent we mainly use point of contact so equation of tangent at point now please remember we have already done this at the point what is at the point equation it is s sorry it should be t equals to zero it should be t equals to 0. So t equals to the equation of tangent. What do we do in t? We replace the terms, right? So let's say given parabola, this is the derivation. How do we get t equals to 0? So let's say tangent is also a straight line. So to get equation of straight line, we need slope point form. Uh, so yeah, we are going to find slope because point we already have is x1 comma i. Slope is mainly uh, we get by differentiation. Now guys, one show last slide. Which one, Vita? This one. Which doubt you have, Anjana? Yeah, what out do you have? Or you just wanted to see? Is it fine? Okay. Thank you, Anjana. Chalo. Now, I hope, uh, do you all know, uh, like, how to differentiate and all derivatives? Have you completed? Have you heard in physics? Yes. Okay. So, uh, the derivatives to get equation of tangent. Uh, let to get slope of tangent. So, let me draw the diagram here. Let's say this is any parabola y, y square equal to 4x. Here is the point P, which is x1 comma y1. And we are drawing a tangent here. Right? We are drawing a tangent line here, which is T. Super Girisha. So, to get the slope of this tangent, we differentiate with respect to x. So Girisha also knows the chain rule, super. So if we differentiate with respect to x, what we'll get? We'll get 2y dy by dx equal to 4a. We are interested in dy by dx. Why? Because dy by dx will give us the slope. So slope divided by dx, nothing but the slope. As you can see here, dy by dx is nothing but the slope. Correct? So what is the slope? Slope of tangent is 2a upon y1. As we have the point x1 comma y1, we substitute the point here. So we have the slope, we have the point. So let us use slope point form. Right? As you can see here, what is the slope point form? y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. Let me clear out this so you can easily see here. y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. So if we use a slope point form, what we'll get? 
y minus one equals to m into x minus x one. We'll get this equation, and now, yeah, this is the equation of tangent. Now, don't worry. This is same as t equals to zero. Why? Because if we rearrange. We'll get y into y one is equal to two a x minus x one. Correct. So this is the equation of Tangent. Now let's see normal. If you remember, uh, in circles, what was normal? Circle is a very special case. So in case of circle, the normal is basically the diameter, but that is not the case for parabola. And believe me, normal is one of the most important part after tangent. For parabola, not for circle. Normal is the most important part for parabola. Circle mate is not important. Why, guys? Because circle is a special case, and the normal to a circle is basically its diameter. So let us see how they have defined the normal. Uh, the definition remains the same. The line perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact. Now, in case of normal, this point P, as I told you, is also known as foot of perpendicular of normal. Yeah, chalo. So this is the point P. This is the parabola. This is the tangent. And this blue line is the normal. I hope you are getting. It. So normal is always a line perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact. Now let's get equation of normal. Now please understand, normal is also a straight line. So we are again going to use slope point form. Now how do we use? See here. Excuse me, guys. Yeah. So the given parabola is y square equals to 4ax. Again, we differentiate. So we get the slope of tangent. Now we know that normal is perpendicular to the tangent. If normal is perpendicular to the tangent, then what will be slope of normal? Minus y one upon two a. Uh, I hope you remember the. What do you call? Product of slope is minus one. Why? Because both of them are perpendicular. Right. So let's see. By using slope point form, we'll get the equation of norm. So before that, let's see what is the MCQ says. Chalo. Give me your answers. S one is greater than zero. I already by mistakenly gave you the answer. If S one is greater than zero, that means yeah. Thank you, Girisha. The point lies outside the parabola. Equation of tangent. Very simple. It is t equals to zero. Right, guys. Next is position of a line with respect to parabola. Now, what is meant by position of a line? Please remember, as we also discussed in circle, a line and a curve, or in this case, a line and a parabola can have total three relations, or there can be three position of the line with respect to parabola. 
First is the line intersects or cuts a chord to the parabola. Second is the line touches the parabola. That means the line is a tangent. And third is the line and tangent. Oh, sorry, the line and parabola do not intersect at all. So the same three cases we discussed in circle. The same three cases we'll be discussing in ellipse. The same three cases we'll be discussing in hyperbola. Just the equations of the curves will change. So let us find, if you remember in circle, we found out a way to determine whether the line is a secant, the line is a tangent, or the line is neither secant nor tangent. Excuse me. See, my uh, health is not good. Uh, I am very cold. So that's why I also cannot give it my all. But okay, please pay attention. Yeah. So if you remember, we uh, in circle, we got that distance, right? Radius and the distance small d. Similarly, we should have some condition in parabola also. To determine whether a line is a tangent or a secant or neither secant nor tangent. Right, guys? So, let the parabola be y square equal to 4x and the line be y equals to mx plus c. If you remember, we took the same line in circle also. So let us substitute y equals to mx plus c in this equation. What are we doing here? We are solving simultaneously. Now, I hope, I hope you know that if we solve the equation of line and parabola simultaneously, we'll get a quadratic equation, which will look like this. If we open the brackets, we'll get equation like this. If we simplify, we'll get like this. Now, this is a quadratic equation in terms of x. That means it can have either two roots or one root or zero roots, depending on the discriminant. Now. This discriminant is related to number of roots. Also, number of roots means the point of intersection. Let me write it here. Number of roots is equal to the points of intersection. Number of roots is equal to points of intersection. So if the equation of quadratic equation will have two roots, we'll have two points of intersection. And what is line and parabola? That means it will be intersecting at two points. That means line will be secant. So let's see the cases here. Depending on the value of lambda, we already discussed. Case one, we get two real and distinct value of delta is greater than zero. That means b square minus 4ac is greater than zero. So we got a condition after solving which look like a greater than mc. If a is greater than mc, then we already discussed the line and the parabola intersects at two points because there are two roots because delta is greater than zero. If we take delta equals to zero, we'll get the line as a tangent. So we get A equals to MC. This is also known as condition of tangency. 
is also known as condition of tangency. So this line L will meet the parabola at only one point, which means that the line is tangent. Let's see the third case. Third case was discriminant is less than zero. That means the line does not intersect. Why? Because there is no roots or no real roots. So that means we'll get A is less than MC. I hope you can remember. So again, we'll have three cases. A greater than MC, A equals to MC, and A less than MC. So the line will look like this. This is a line, this is a parabola. It will neither intersect nor cut the parabola. So are you all guys following? Yes or no guys? Give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Anjana and Grisha. Now, we already proved this, that in the last slide only, if the line y equals to mx plus it touches the parabola, that means the discriminant will be equals to 0. And if the discriminant equals to 0, we get c equals to a upon m, which is known as condition of tangency. No need to again go through this. Uh, here, one important thing to remember is this. The point of contact. The point of contact will be a by m square and 2a by m. Correct, guys? You already saw this proof. Yeah. So, now, equation of tangent. What do we got, guys? We got A equals to M into C. That means, what is C? C is A by M. If you remember, we had assumed the equation of the line as y equals to mx plus c. If we substitute the value of c here, we'll get the equation of tangent. So what we'll get? We'll get y equals to mx plus or minus, sorry, plus a upon m. If you remember, this is called the slope form. Slope form. Uh, we did slope form also in circle for its tangent. I hope you can remember it. Right? So let's see what we have next. Chola. The locus of the point of intersection of two perpendicular tangents. Do you remember point of intersection of two perpendicular tangents? It is called director circle. I hope you remember if two tangents are drawn from a point, two tangents are drawn from a point, then if those tangents are perpendicular to each other, then their locus will give us the directrix. Or in general, it is called director circle. In parabola, it will be called directrix. In circle, we used to call director circle. So these are just names. Uh, I hope you can remember it. Correct, guys? Let's see how to get this. So first, if you see, till now, every question may, we have assumed the parabola. Why? Because there should be no confusion because we can use the results only if this parabola comes. That is y square equal to 4x and 90% of the time in JEE this parabola is only asked. The other three standard forms are never asked. Right? So let the parabola be this. The equation of tangent in slope form. 
if we take lcm here and then cross multiply we'll get a quadratic equation in terms of m as you can see this is a quadratic equation in terms of m again we got quadratic again how many roots it can have two roots depending on the value of delta but we are not interested in value of delta what we are inter interested in m1 and m2 because these two are roots right so sum of the roots and product of the roots we want tangents are perpendicular that means m1 into m2 will be equals to minus 1 if we substitute it here we'll get a by x1 equals to plus 1 and if we cross multiply we'll get x equals to minus a or x1 plus a equals to 0 which is the equation of parabola yeah a is equals to minus x1 uh, we obviously we will directly uh, ultimately we are going to replace x1 by x because it's a locus superb Grisha. chalo so locus of x1 comma y1 the last step of locus says that replace x1 by x and y1 by y. So we got the equation of tangent, or oh, sorry, equation of director circle, which in this case is the directrix. This is very important, guys. Equation of normal in slope form. So we know that equation of normal is for equation of normal, we first find the slope and then the use slope point form. So let's say the slope of the normal is m only, and then we use the slope point form. Please remember slope form. M is the slope of normal. And foot of perpendicular is AM square comma minus 2L. Which we call it as point of contact also. Now. To find the equation of chord to parabolas having px1 comma y1 as their midpoint. This is again the standard result, or you can say chord with given middle point. You can say chord with given middle point chord with given middle point. So, the equation of normal will get. Uh, it is very important to remember this equation, guys. Please try to remember. Next, we are going to see chord of contact. What is chord of contact? I hope you remember chord of contact is the chord which is drawn between or through the two point of context of tangent. So when two tangents are drawn from external point P to the parabola, the line joining the point of contact is called chord of contact. So, the equation of chord of contact is given by the 
equal to zero. T equal to zero. Note a chord of contact of a point which lies inside the parabola does not exist. That means let's say we have the parabola and two tangents can be drawn only when the point is outside the parabola. Two tangents can be drawn only when the point is outside the parabola. And only then we can draw chord of contact. But if the point is inside the parabola, it is not possible to draw a tangent as you can see. It is never possible to draw a tangent. That means if a point lies inside the parabola, there we cannot draw the tangent. Which means we cannot draw the chord of contact. Correct? So chord of contact of a point which lies on parabola and tangent at the same point are same. Right. What it is trying to say that this is the case when the point comes on the tangent. So uh, let me draw it out for you so you can understand. Now, please try to understand as this point comes closer and closer, the tangents will become broader and broader until one day when the point comes on the parabola. Now, see, for this, the chord of contact was this. For this, the chord of contact was this. For this, the chord of contact is this. Right now, if both the points coincide here, then we can draw a tangent and the chord of contact will have length zero. Why? Because these two points, these two points finally came closer and closer to each other and became a single point. That means the length of chord of contact, as you can see here. It kept on decreasing and finally it became zero. This is what the statement is trying to say. All right, guys, give me a thumbs up if it's clear so we can move further. Okay, super, Manjana, thank you. Equation of pair of tangents. I hope you remember equation of pair of tangents. Uh, Equation of pair of tangents according to our notation is S into S1 is equals to T square. What is S? S is the expression of parabola. What is T? T is tangent and S1 is we substitute point in the tangent. So I think the time is up guys. And yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for the next. Bye bye, guys, everyone. Take care.